And joining me now from WTOC Television in Savannah, Dal Kennedy. You know him from The News, but he also does a little bit of The Sports as well. Dal, uh, first of all, you know what we're going to first. It's the Georgia Southern Eagles. We, we know you were on hand for the game. It was homecoming. Had a pretty good crowd come out despite the Eagles being 0-4. Some high hopes for the game with New Mexico State coming in, a team that they had... Uh, beaten pretty endedly in the past, um, and things did not exactly go their way. They uh, had a halftime lead, hadn't had that in a while, but then kind of laid an egg there in the second half, couldn't get the offense going, and ended up losing 35-27 to at Paulson. Well, you stole my thunder because I was going to mention the fact that they led at the half for the first time this season. That was actually something, and, and was some progress when you think about uh, against Arkansas State, they had the lead close to halftime, but gave it up so quickly as, as, as Arkansas State went back down the field. There were times when they could hold against New Mexico State. They could, they could hold them up a little bit as far as the defense, but then something would happen. Uh, you could see some progress from the offense. Um, you could see a couple of plays. They would get you know, some long runs, particularly off that option pitch. Um, there were there were signs of progress. You saw something that shined, but then they just couldn't keep it going. And then, as we said about the defense, it's almost like Yogi Berra, you know, deja vu all over again. We talked about the the passing game, where you know the opponent just comes out there on the field and just just chucks it down the field, thinking, hey, if you either get a reception or you're going to get pass interference call, and that seemed to be what happened for much of the evening. They could hurl the ball. Down, you know, they could get the, the short passes in and they were connecting on those and they'd make a first down. But then if they just put the ball up in the air and threw it deep, you're either going to get a completion or you're going to get a pass interference call. Well, it was a weird game because, you know, as you mentioned, the Eagle offense in the first half was moving the ball pretty good. They had a fairly sustained drive to score the first touchdown, had a big uh, run by Wesley Fields for the second touchdown and then scored on special teams on a kickoff return. So things were looking pretty good. They added a field goal. The defense, though, it just seems like every time when the offense makes a big play, the defense gives up a big play. You know, the uh, defense gets a turnover. The offense either can't cash in or uh, turns it over themselves. So, and especially, I guess the most disheartening thing is that, you know, you get three players tossed from the game a week after Coach Summers had said, we're going to crack down and be a little more disciplined around here. You know, the fans are kind of up in arms. Give us something to hang our hat on here. Mm. It just seemed like the defense was hot and cold. There were times where they got pressure on the quarterback. They got some sacks. Um, they were able to do that. But then, you know, the secondary would give up a, a long play, give up a first down. Or you've got them at fourth down. You force them to punt, and you run into the punter. Automatic first down gives them new life, and, and they're able to, to keep going from there. Let's get to the bright spot, or one of the bright spots from the game, and that was in between the first and second quarter, uh, Adrian Peterson being honored for his upcoming induction into the College Football Hall of Fame, where he'll join the only other Eagle, Tracy Hamm, uh, being inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. You had a chance, of course, to talk to Adrian throughout the years, uh, as well as covering him, him when he was here and watching him play. It was quite a neat thing to see him being honored there uh, between the quarters and got a great round of applause from the fans. When you talk about class acts in college football, they don't get any classier than Adrian Peterson. As we say, the original AP around in these parts with apologies to the, to the other guy. Um, just an amazing talent. I can still remember meeting him as a freshman and um, some of the folks that were, that were working with him in the athletic department, you know, because of the the challenges that he came here with a speech impediment and and talking to him and explaining to him you're going to be playing on Sundays in the NFL and doing interviews in front of a locker and this is something you need to tackle now and and he went after it as aggressively as he did practicing on the football field and and what he's been able to do and overcome and and use it as a positive and and talk with so many generations talking with kids talking with school kids about what he was able to do and if he can do it they can do it and just so many amazing things and so many doors that it has opened for him and and to see how he has handled himself you know through his NFL career and even 
after that career, but, but to be able to, to work in the community, it's just great to see him honored. I'm looking forward to uh, December. You know, we still got to talk to the College Football Hall of Fame about Coach Russell, but they've got <laughs> Tracy in there. They've got AP. You know, we've got to work on that other thing, but it's going to be a joy to celebrate with him uh, coming up in December. All right, well, the Eagles 0-5 on the season. It's tough. You know, they got to go to UMass this week. UMass winless on the year as well, so somebody's going to have to win that one. Uh, hopefully it could be the Eagles. They need a little momentum at this time. All right, Dal Kennedy joining us. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll see some highlights from the game and hear from Coach Summers and some of the players. No Credit Refused isn't just an offer, it's a way of business and has been for over 100 years. No banks, no ridiculous credit requirements, just local Badcock store owners who treat you right and give you credit when others won't. It's never been easier to express your style and love your home. Coming at Paulson Stadium, the Eagles' first Saturday game all season long, 16,000 plus on hand as the Eagles host New Mexico State. Alt uniforms and Irk on the front face mask, Adrian Peterson in the house. And the Eagles also honoring AP with his number three on the side of the helmet. As for the game, trouble early on as this pass break up and hard hit. Tomarcio Reese called for targeting, review held up, and he was ejected from the game. The Aggies would then go 75 yards on eight plays. Tyler Rogers goes in for the five-yard score, third and eight, and Shy Wirtz stopped just shy of the goal line. From there, the give is to L.A. Ramsby, who breaks the plane for the score, and we're tied at seven all. But as has been the case this year, the opposition quickly responds. Rodgers to a wide open Gregory Hogan, who waltzes in for the 59-yard touchdown, 14-7 New Mexico State. But unlike the past few games, the Eagles quickly respond. Wesley Fields gets outside, and he goes 48 yards for the touchdown. Fields with 103 yards in the game, and we're tied at 14-all. Eagle great Adrian Peterson honored between quarters with a plaque noting his upcoming induction into the College Football Hall of Fame. Joining Tracy Hamm as the only two Eagles to accomplish that feat. And Peterson still looking like he could get out there and play. The Eagle defense playing inspired here and a wild play as the pass incomplete but McQuavian Brinson somehow is able to rip it away before it hits the ground and the Eagles in great field position. The offense stalls though. Tyler Bass comes in to hit the field goal and gives Georgia Southern a 17-14 lead. But the Aggies right back. Rodgers to Jason Huntley who had 87 yards receiving, 101 rushing, filling in for the injured Larry Rose, the team's leading rusher. And then it's Rodgers to Jaleel Scott, 21-17. On the ensuing kickoff, the Aggies trying a pooch kick, forgetting that Dexter Carter Jr. was up front and Carter can run a little. Well, actually a lot. Carter off to the races, 70 yards for the touchdown. And the Eagles finally with something to celebrate at halftime, leading 24-21. Second half, the offense trying to move downfield. Wirt swings the pass ahead to Miles Campbell, who gets... 28 yards to the 40. Next, the give to Demarcus Godfrey on the shovel pass, and he gets 18 yards. Unfortunately, the Eagles unable to get any closer, and Tyler Bass extends the lead to 27-21 with the 41-yard field goal. That was about it for the Georgia Southern offense. As for the Aggies, Rodgers to Huntley. He gets down to the 33. That moves us to the fourth, and Rodgers to Connor Kramer to Bryce Roberts, and New Mexico State retakes the lead 28-27. move ahead late in the game, third and long, and 
The pass to Anthony Muse to the 20, and then from the 5, Rodgers lofts it up. Jaleel Scott hauls it in, 35-24. The Eagles with one final chance on fourth and long. Shy Wirtz ends up just shy of the first down, and the Eagles fall to 0-5, losing 35-24. I feel that we get a we get a win, our team go roll. As you see, we keep getting better, better and better every 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 game. See, we put our offense put most points on the board. Our defense, our, Logan Hunt had three sacks tonight. Our D line is tremendous. They doing a good job with pass rush. Our linebackers are doing a good job in coverage. I, I believe in everything that we got to do. We just got to get a win. When we get a win, we gonna roll. We got to get on those as, as players. We got to stay on that. Those little those little things that are happening. We, that's, that's on the players. We got to get on them and, and cut out those little mistakes. We want to win. We want to win. We see. I mean, the problem with is that we see everything, and we want to win so bad to bring it back to Statesboro. This is my senior year. I don't want to go out like this. I promise you that every single day I'm going out there to work with trying to, trying to get a win. Uh, very difficult, uh, tough pill to swallow, and um, you know my my heart my heart goes out for these young men uh, as hard as they are working as much as they deserve uh, a win and as much as we've worked to put ourselves in an opportunity for a win uh, we weren't able to get it and uh, and uh, there, there's there's not necessarily um, you know uh, a lot of different things to point out it is uh, it is just very frustrating right now for. Uh, where we're at when we should be in a position to be celebrating right now and we're not and uh and that's where that's where i'm at my heart goes out i'm upset I'm frustrated I'm ticked um every bit of it and um so uh, with that i'll let y'all uh i'll let y'all go on with any questions and that's what tonight's game comes down to and um and uh, again those are not that's not uh that's not finger pointing. That's not any of those things. We've got to be able to use this as an example to know that we don't ever want to feel like this off of these kind of, you know, mistakes again. But but again, I, those, those are those are things that those, those are things that are those are things that are on me. Those are things that are on me, and uh, and that's not that's not on them. That's on me because when it comes down to discipline, when it comes down to frustration, when it comes down to any of those things and how they respond or react, that is a response or react mechanism of, of something with the head coach that he's allowed in the program. That's on me. It's not on them. And, uh, and, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll take that and I've got to do a better job of it. And uh, obviously I've got to do a better job of being a disciplinarian. Family Internal Medicine Associates of Statesboro, providing primary care for Statesboro area patients since 1998. Providing complete physicals, complete sports physicals, Medicare wellness exams, full diabetes treatment, and education from lifestyle changes to oral medications to insulin pump therapy. In-house dermatology, in-house circulation tests and ultrasounds, in-house lab. And introducing our new nurse practitioner, Melissa Beasley, as we now accommodate same-day or next-day appointments to serve your needs. Family Internal Medicine Associates of Statesboro, where we care. To stay ahead, a parent has to really be on the go. And stop for school, stop for sports, stop for an intervention. But you don't have to stop for banking. To stay ahead with mobile online banking, bank ahead with Queensboro National Bank and Trust. See Jeremy Reagan and the staff at Queensboro National Bank and Trust, South Main Street in Statesboro. All right, joining us once again, it's Dal Kennedy from WTOC Television in Savannah. Dal, we know you were out and about uh, this past Friday. Unfortunately, you had to start things off there in Guyton where you uh, got a little bit wet when you got to Statesboro. And I can't believe Statesboro has seen rain each of the last couple of weeks. They did not have it this week. And... I don't know if the rain would have helped or hurt. They ended up playing Ware County. We're going to begin there. You did get to see the uh, at least the second half of that game where Statesboro was able to come back and tie the game at 21-all. Ware County 1-4 and four on the season going into the game, but a lot better than their record indicated. Some of those losses had come to, uh, I think, all four had come to teams ranked in the top 40, including Lowndes, Coffee County, Northside, Warner Robins. So uh, no surprise that they were as good as they were. States were unable to hang on. They end up losing that game. But, you know, again, like the Eagles, sometimes they show some progress, but unable to get over the hump. It, you know, it was interesting to, to get there to see the score that it's 21 7, 
and uh, to come in, Statesboro, their first possession, uh, pulls out a quick strike, gets a score. Uh, they're able to, to hold Ware's offense temporarily, get the ball back. They go down for another score. I, I was waiting for somebody to say, why didn't you get here sooner? But uh, <laughs> it, it, it was good to see that comeback and see them be able to, to, to not let that deficit you know, get in their heads. They were able to, pull, you know, to, to tie things up. And, uh, and then Ware just had too much, too much ground game. Um, they were able to hand the ball off and, and get you know, good five, eight yards a clip, it seemed like. So they're able to hold on to the ball and, and just, push, just push the line of scrimmage down the field. Yeah, Roger Bradley ends up with over 200 yards rushing. We knew about their quarterback, Jeremiah O'Hara, and the fact uh, that he had come in as one of the more touted uh, dual-threat quarterbacks. He was able to throw the ball pretty effectively, and then their running game was solid. Statesboro's Achilles heel has been their defense this year, locking up and, and stopping the big plays, and they were unfortunately unable to do that. But I guess the good news is, in a, in a region that only has five teams, they're still alive, even though they're 0-2, they have two games left, so you still have an opportunity to make the postseason. If you, if you can outrun somebody, if you can uh, outscore, if you can leave one team behind you, you can still make the playoffs and, and uh, take your chances once you get into the state. That's right. So they have South F, they're off this week. Nice because it's fair week. You don't need that extra distraction. And then the following week, they have South Effingham at home. Uh, and then wrap things up at Wayne to uh, end the, the regular season. All right, well, moving over to Southeast Bullock, they had a rare Thursday night game. We know how things can be in Savannah where they have a limited stadium, so somebody's got to play on a Thursday. Somebody has to play on a Saturday. It was Southeast Bullock's time this time around. They played Savannah High last year. Southeast got blown out by Savannah at home in Brooklyn. This time it goes down to the wire. They end up winning on a Jacob Sandhagen field goal as time expired. Pretty exciting win. Southeast now uh, kind of the inside track at the number two seed in their region. Always a, always a, co a competitive region and, and to be able to hold that spot and, and know that you're right now, you know, as long as you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to stay in there. And Southeast has been able to play some some pretty consistent ball. It's ground, you know, the possession, just moving the football down the field. They get a occasional burst from the running back, but a lot of times it is it is three you know three yards in a cloud of dust, so to speak. But they're able to hold on to the ball, move it down the field, and and chew up some clock and and put a put the ball in the end zone. So they're they're managing the game pretty well. It isn't always necessarily flashy, but they're able to manage that game manage the clock, and, uh, and a lot of times bring that win out. So, you know, Coach Pennington is in there in an interim capacity, came in kind of at the last minute. They may want to ask him about sticking around. Who knows? Yeah, I, I don't know his interest in that, but, yeah, I mean, he's doing pretty well over there. They seem to be a fairly senior-laden team. Don't know how they'll do next year, but this year – Again, the inside track, they've got Groves coming up this week, and Groves, I believe, is winless on the year. Then Beach, then Windsor Four, so it, it, it amps up a little bit toward the end of the year. So we'll see if they're able to hold on that Windsor Forest game, the final game of the season at home, so it should be a good one there. All right, for, for the Bullock Academy Gators, they had a chance inside track at the uh, region title a couple weeks ago. Now they're fighting for their lives. They just got beat pretty bad at home. A uh, game that they were actually up 13-12 to 12 at one point, but ended up losing bad to uh, Trinity Christian out of Dublin. So uh, they end up splitting with the Trinities. They beat Trinity Sharpsburg, lost to Trinity Dublin, and now B.A.'s got Pinewood coming up, and Pinewood would like nothing more than to spoil B.A.'s postseason opportunities. You could throw the record book out when it, when it comes to Bullock Academy and Pinewood. Those two, you know, you could have one that's undefeated and one that's winless, and they're still going to go at it tooth and nail. You know, they, they have given up, so Bullock Academy has given up some of the, the uh, leverage they had in that region, like you said, and they're now um, playing for their lives, and they got to rely on some help as well. And for their first loss of the year, maybe we uh, jinxed them talking about the fact that they were undefeated at home. But uh, again, that region is, stays tough all the way to the end, so. It, when you put Bullock Academy and Pinewood together, it's going to be a knockdown drag out. All right, the other team that was in action, the Portal Panthers, uh, were never really in it. Uh, lost hard on the road to Calvary Day. Things don't get much easier. They have Savannah Christian coming up this week. All right, Dow, before we go, 
One more thing to mention on the high school front is the fact that we have Southeast Bullock and Statesboro High both advancing to the second round of the state. Uh, Bullock Academy had advanced. They ended up losing two out of three this past weekend uh, to Westfield. But Statesboro High and Southeast Bullock for the first time ever both advancing to the second round. Statesboro uh, will be on the road at Locust Grove and Southeast Bullock gets to host uh, because they're the number one seed. Kind of nice to see softball uh, getting uh, uh, improving around Bullock County. Definitely. We see some of the, you know, the preseason tournament that, that we see over at Georgia Southern early in the year. Some of these teams were able to get some competition in ahead of time and then start playing their uh, region schedule. So it's good to see them getting that experience, putting it to use and getting into the postseason. All right. Well, Dal Kennedy from WTOC, we thank you for joining us. And uh, don't forget to tune in during the week and watch Dal as he is their bureau chief up this way. All right. Thanks, Dal. We'll be back in just a moment to take a look at some of the highlights from our area high school football. The Medical Center Pharmacy on Grenade Street is proud to be your Health Mart Pharmacy in Statesboro. The Medical Center Pharmacy, locally owned and serving this community for 50 years, is open 364 days a year. The pharmacists at Medical Center know there's nothing more important than your family's well-being. That's why they take the time to know their customers, explain their medications, and answer any questions. The Medical Center Pharmacy, your Health Mart Pharmacy. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Lee Hill and Johnston Insurers. We've been Statesboro's insurance people since 1963. That's a lot of memories. Recognized as one of the leading agencies in Georgia, Lee Hill and Johnston is independent and offers a complete line of personal and business insurance for auto, life, home, and health. We'll shop companies to find the lowest premiums and best coverage for you, your family, or your business. Lee Hill and Johnston Insurers, the insurance people since 1963. Statesboro High hosting Ware County in a key region matchup at Womack Field. In the first, on their opening possession, Davis Wiggins fires to Corey Gibson for a first down. Next, the give to Tupac Lanier, who gets outside, and Tupac will go 59 yards for the touchdown as Statesboro grabs a 7-0 lead. But the Ware County Gators would respond to give to Jordan Turner. He turns the corner and goes 25 yards for the touchdown and we're tied at seven all. Later, third and long, and Jeremiah O'Hara finds Jacob Henry for a first down, much to the chagrin of Coach Bradley Ward. That leads to the give up the middle to Raja Bradley for the 10-yard touchdown and it's 14-7 Ware County. Statesboro tries to come back, but Davis Wiggins' pass will be tipped and intercepted by the Gators, Devontae Linton at midfield. We move to the second quarter, still 14-7, fourth and 13. Ware County goes for it, and O'Hara hits Jacob Hendricks in traffic for the 28-yard score. It's 21-7. Just before the half, Statesboro again going to the air, and again the ball tipped and hauled in by Trey Cobb, and we go to the half with Statesboro trailing 21 to 7. Third quarter, and much like last week, Statesboro starts things off with a bang. Tupac Lanier taking off for a 58 yard pickup. He'd finish with 160 yards on only 10 carries. This would lead to a three yard touchdown by Drayton Marsh. He's in for the score, and Statesboro cuts the lead to 21 to 14. After a Ware County fumble to give to Lanier, who looks like he's stopped at the line of scrimmage, but he squirts out and goes 36 yards for the touchdown, and we're tied at 21 all. Late in the third, Ware lining up for the field goal, but this is a fake, and it's tossed to Trey Cobb, who manages to get it inside the five for a Ware first down, then on third and goal. Looks like Statesboro is able to hold. Quite a delay on the call. But eventually, O'Hara ruled in for the score. 28-21 Ware County. In the fourth, Bradley goes in again. He'd finish with 211 yards rushing, and Statesboro falls 35-21. At Gator Alley, a region showdown with home field advantage in the state playoffs on the line. Senior night, BA hosting Trinity. 
in trouble early on. The punt blocked right into the open arms of Davis Skeeters, who goes in for the touchdown, and it's six to nothing Crusaders. On offense, Ty Mingle looking for extra yards, but it's Skeeters ripping the ball right out of his hands and taking off all the way down to the Gator 10-yard line. A few plays later, David Coleman will find Will Clardy, who's ruled in for the touchdown, and it's 12 to nothing Trinity Christian. The Gator offense finally getting on track. Don Aaron swings it over to Mingle, who fights his way ahead to the Crusader 32-yard line. Next, it's Aaron keeping it himself, and he fights his way into the end zone, but is ruled down at the one. No problem as from there to give to senior Brandon Merrill. He's in, and the lead cut to 12 to 7. Late in the first, the flea flicker, and Aaron chucks it ahead to Jake Nelson, who makes a nice grab. We move ahead to the second, still 12 to 7, and the handoff to Mingle, who gets ahead 10 yards outside for a Gator first down. And then the give will go to Nelson from the one, and he's in for the score as Bullock Academy takes a 13 to 12 lead. That lead short lived though as Coleman airs it out. And Walker Payne gets behind the defense for the 67-yard touchdown as Trinity Christian grabs an 18-13 lead. We move to the second half and the Crusaders driving but cough up the ball. This one recovered by the Gators' Lawson Anderson. The offense unable to capitalize and in the fourth quarter, Coleman will spot Whit Mason for the 23-yard touchdown to extend the lead to 25-13. Gator head coach Terrence Hennessy said earlier in the week that the team that doesn't turn the ball over will probably win the game, and unfortunately, he was correct. On the ensuing kickoff, another turnover for the Gators, and this one will prove costly. As the Crusaders able to put things away, Coleman rolling out and finding Gabe Meadows, who gets a first down. And finally, it'll be Coleman going in for the final score of the ball game as the Gators fall 32 to 13. A rare Thursday night football matchup for Southeast Bullock on the road at Savannah High, second place in the region on the line. And in the first half, the Jackets going with Chase Walker stopped for no game, but Chase keeps those legs moving and he's gone. 55 yards for the touchdown, but this one not over. The Blue Jackets move downfield and score on this Nesbitt touchdown. Now the big gamble, should they go for the win or the tie with just over a minute to go? They will opt to go for two. Brinson looks like he's down, but somehow manages to hit a wide open Devin Thompson. 22-21 with a minute and change left in the game. No problem, says Blaze Minnick, who hits John Trell Wells, who gets the ball to about the 15-yard line. Then, with two seconds remaining in the ball game, Jacob Sanhagen for the win. It's good from 20 yards out, and the Yellow Jackets with the walk-off victory, 24-22, the final from Savannah.